and a lot of other stuff that I, 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 just, I don't even talk about. Amen? I wasn't raised in church. I didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. I didn't know anything about Jesus' name, baptism. I didn't know anything about one God. I didn't know anything about worship or praise or shouting or dancing in the presence of God. I never felt what it felt like to walk into the presence of God. Come on and bring your pain and bring your sorrow. Come on in the middle of your trouble and walk into the presence of God and feel God. I didn't know anything about that. I'd never heard of the Holy Ghost. I didn't know nothing about it. So one day I came home from work and my mother had went into my bedroom while I was gone to work. And my mother went through uh, the closet. Huh? And uh, she got a hammer and an axe and she dug up the floor where I made me a little hole and I buried stuff. Come on. All right. If you got a mama and a daddy that cares about what you do through in your bedroom, you ought to thank God. Come on, you ought to thank God. Come on. And when I came home, my mama had put all the stuff on the counter. And when I came home, I walked through the door, and I, I first thing I saw was all of my paraphernalia. Come on, be sure you see and I find you out. Mama had dug it all out, and she put it on the counter in the middle of the kitchen. And when I walked in the door, the first thing I saw was that stuff. And so I stood there froze and I looked around real quick. I didn't see mama. And uh, so I do what any other normal 18 year old, well not normal. Uh, uh, I did what I normally did. I, I was thinking up, well, what, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? I gotta come up with a good lie. Huh? Quick. And so about that time, I'm standing there thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? About that time, Mama comes out. She steps into the living room. And she's fastly, quickly approaching me. Yeah. <laughs> now, my Mama, uh, she might not have been like your Mama, but my Mama, whatever, was close enough to her. When she wanted to tear your end up, she grabbed it. It didn't matter what it was. She whipped you with it. And so when my mama was coming toward me, I knew I was, I was fixing to be had. And so I'm standing there thinking, I said, whoa, whoa, mama, stop. Calm down, slow down. Mama stopped and looked at me and I said, now mama, I've been framed. <laughs> slow your road, put the stick down. Put the shovel down, put the broom down, whatever you got. Come on, Mama had an arsenal. She pulled out all kinds of stuff. And uh, uh, she stood there. She said, what'd you say? I said, I was framed. I said, somebody's broke into my room and hid all that stuff. They're trying to, they're trying to destroy me. About that time, Mama jumped on top of me with all fours. Boom. She got a hold of me. Oh, God. Hey, and when I was 18 years old, I weighed about 340 pounds. And my mama jumped on top of me, all fours, and she whipped me. She started whipping me. <laughs> and my mama wrapped me up, buddy. She was tearing my hide up. And I'm thinking, God, what if she's going to kill me? She, oh, she tried. And my mama whipped me a little while, and then she'll start crying, and she'll start weeping. And she would hug me a little while. I think, thank God it's over. But then something come over. She'd get mad again. She'd go to flogging me again. Beating the tire out of me. And then I don't know how long it went on. She went back and forth in between the two for quite a while. But finally my mama stopped. And with tears running down my mama's face, I saw something that I'd never seen in my mama before. I saw a madness and a fear. Come on. That I never saw before, but my mama looked me dead into my eyes and looked deep within my soul and my mama made me a promise. She said, son, I refuse to let you be an alcoholic like your uncles. She said, I refuse to let you go to end up in prison like your uncles. I refuse to let you be an, an addict, come on to drugs and wind up in an early grave. Come on. My mama got mad and my mama pointed her finger at me and, 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 and 
And she told me, she said, son, she said, I'm giving you two weeks. Two weeks. She said, you're going to change. And if you don't change, she said, I'm going to lock you up in a rehab and you will not get out until you don't want drugs and you don't want alcohol anymore. And until it's out of your system, you will not get out of that place. You'll lose your job. You'll lose everything that you got. Come on. Amen. And I, my mama, I knew she meant business. Amen. So, so the next day, I, to get in good graces with my mom and my daddy, I got the I got the ride uh, the push mower out, and I went up to the road ditch when I got home from work, and I, I was saying I, I got this plan. I'm gonna mow the the, the road ditch, and I'm gonna be sweating. I'm gonna I'm gonna be working hard when mom and daddy pulls in the driveway, and they see me. anybody know what I'm talking about? They boy, I'm going to change, man. I'm on this bad. And so and so I'm out there mowing and I'm working and all of a sudden I did not know the voice of God. I heard voices. But I didn't know the voice of God. And so I'm mowing the road ditch and I hear this voice speak to me and the voice said, look to the road. And it... I heard voices, but I've never heard the voice of God. So I questioned. I said, yeah, you just have to know where I came from. And uh, I, I, I began to talk to this voice. I said, what you say? <laughs> he said, I said to look at the road. I said, look at the road. He said, look at the road now. So I'm, I'm, I've got my push mower going. I'm working hard. And so I heard the voice. I questioned the voice. The voice said, look at the road. So the third time the voice told me to look at the road, I looked at the road. And when I looked at the road, everything kind of just went slow motion. You know how slow motion does, don't you? Like that. And I'm stuck there. And about that time, uh, this 1987 blue Nissan Pulsar came by. And the pulsar stopped. I stopped. Everything around me stopped. I'm thinking I ain't done drugs in about three days. But something's wrong with this picture. Huh? And I messed up. And about that time, I'm stuck, I'm stuck there like this. The pulsar stops. And when I look inside the Nissan pulsar, there's the most beautiful young lady driving that car I'd ever saw in my life. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Boom! <laughs> I stopped, and she kept going. So I'm stuck there. I go home. I go to bed that night, and I'm thinking, it will not leave me alone. It won't leave me alone. Yeah. Little did I know God was right. doing oh, something. Yeah. And, and 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 so about four o'clock that morning, I remembered who that little who that girl was, and I remember her name. Her name was Tina Colburn. Come on now. And so I remembered who she was, and I remembered I don't know where she's at, but I know where her brother's at because I went to school with her brother, and I knew where he lived. And so I went to her brother's door, and I knocked on the door. And when I knocked on the door, he came to the door. And you gotta, you gotta, let me explain it to you. I had an afro. <laughs> oh, yeah. All 300 pounds had a big afro on top. I had on a wine shirt, had on army fatigue pants, and I had on high top Reebok tissue. Son, I was styling and profiling, buddy. I knocked on that door, and uh, Michael came to the door, and he opened up the door. He said, man, what in the world are you doing? I said, man, where's your sister at? He said, what do you want with my sister? I said, I'm going to ask her out on a date. He said, man, my sister's not going to go out with you. I said, well, we'll see about that. I said, where she's at? Where is she at? He said, he said, 
uh, come on in here for a minute. And so he pulled me inside the house and he said, sit down over on that couch. He said, I'll be back in a minute. I thought, oh God, he's gone to get a gun. <laughs> A few minutes later, he came walking down the hall, and you know what he was holding? A big family Bible. I'm talking about, I'm talking about one of them big ones. You know what I'm talking about? Boom. He sat down in front of me, and he opened up the Bible. When he opened up the Bible, he opened it up to Acts 2.38. And he began to read. And I received my first Bible study that I'd ever had in my life. And he began to tell me, Mike, I know you're an alcoholic. I know you're into drugs. I know you've been in trouble with the law. I know your reputation. Huh? And Michael began to look at me and begin to tell me the words. I'd heard my teachers, I'd heard my teachers in the school tell my parents, that boy would never amount to anything. Come on, Brother McCall. Son, you was preaching. Hallelujah. I heard other family members call my parents uh, into another room while I'm on the other side of the wall. And I heard my family members say, we can't let our children be around him anymore. He's no good. Come on. I heard the judge tell my daddy, that boy is going to get one more chance because I know you and I love you. You, but that boy, if he shows up in front of me again, he's going to jail and he's not going to get out for a long time. I heard all of that stuff. Come on. But for the first time in my life, come on, I heard her brother begin to speak to me and he said, Mike, you don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to be a drug addict. You don't have to live in addictions and sin. You don't have to let the devil destroy your life. You can be baptized in Jesus' name. You can receive the gift of the Holy you can, you can, you, you can be called out. God can give you a great life. And I got my first Bible study. And when He got through teaching me, I stood up and I said, "Man, all oh, that's good and fine." I said, "But where is your sister?" <laughs> <laughs> and so. He said, well, she lives over next door. So I went next door to that little trailer there, and I knocked on the door. And when, when, when uh, I knocked on the door, the door opened up, and his most beautiful 17-year-old girl, good Lord have mercy. <laughs> Sister Allen, before I get in trouble, stand up. <laughs> here she is right here. And uh, uh, I thought I better throw that in real quick. And uh, uh, she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm here to ask you out on a date. I was scared to death. She said, no. She, I mean, she didn't have to pray about it. <laughs> Buddy, I was hurt, man. You talking about deflated ego, man. I'm... So I walked off. I mean, I was hurt. I walked off. I started going to the truck. By the time I got to the truck, open the door, I heard her say, she said, come here. Y'all say, come here, they'll go. She said, come here. I said, oh, boy. I knew I had her. I come walking back around there. I said, yes, dear. <laughs> she said, will you go to church with me tonight? I said, church. She said, church. I said, I said, uh, where do you go to church? She said, I go to the First Pentecostal Church. I said, Pentecostal? I didn't know what Pentecostal was. I didn't have no clue. I always thought she was a Mennonite. <laughs> I didn't know. So I said, well, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. So I went home, and I didn't think about it long, buddy. I started getting dressed. Son, I'm going to church. 
and I, I get my, I put my cowboy shirt on. I didn't know nothing about church. I put my cowboy shirt on, my cowboy, my, 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 my blue jeans. I got my cowboy boots on, and I got my cowboy hat. Now, if you ain't never seen a hat, a cowboy hat on top of an afro. So when I come walking down the hall, man, I'm walking tall, buddy. And I come walking down the hall like this, I, man, I'm getting with it. And my daddy's sitting in the recliner. And I walk by my daddy, he says, son, where in the world are you going looking like that? I said, daddy, I'm going to church. He said, church? I said, I'm going to church. He said, he said where are you going? I said, I'm going to the first Pentecostal church. He said, well, the first thing is, he said, take that hat off of your head. You look like a rodeo clown is what you look like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you love family? They tell you the truth, baby. And uh, uh, he said, now, where are you going? I said, I'm going to First Pentecostal Church. He said, oh, no, son. I said, what is it, daddy? He said, man, you go down there. He said, they'll blow that stuff on you, and it'll make you levitate off the ground. <laughs> I said, do what? He said, yeah. So I got scared, man. I got scared. And when I got scared, I done what I normally did. I called up my best drinking buddy, old Jeff Westbrook. I called him up. He answered the phone. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to church. He said, church? I said, church? He said, well, where, where are you going? I said, I'm going to First Pentecostal Church. He said, oh, man. He said, don't do that. I said, why not? 